Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. In today's video, I'm going to be building a pedal board for a silent stage. I've got a couple of gigs coming up and the band has stipulated that it's a silent stage. This is happening more and more these days. And if you don't know what a silent stage is, a silent stage is exactly as it sounds. It's a stage without amplifiers. So luckily with the technology that's around today, we can actually sort of build a pedal board, a rig, a guitar rig that actually sounds fantastic. Now we all love using amplifiers on stage, but for some reason it's going more and more this way. So we've got to embrace it at some point. Now the heart of this rig, what I thought I'd use is the Boss IR200. So I need to put this somewhere on the board. Let's just stick it there for the moment. Now all of my amp tones and the reverb is going to come out the IR200. It sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you don't know or you haven't seen any of my other videos, I used to have a Neural DSP called Cortex. As soon as I tried the Boss IR200, I sold the Neural DSP called Cortex because I personally think this thing sounds absolutely mega. Anyway, that's the heart of the rig. I'm going to need some other pedals on here, but I need to be a little bit frugal. I haven't got a massive space and I'm going to be using this uh, one spot CS6. It's a six output power supply, so I need to contain it down to six pedals, including the IR200. So we've got the IR200 on the board. Now, obviously no pedal board is complete without a tuner. I'm going to be using this uh, TC Electronic Polytune 3. The great thing about this pedal, not that I'm going to be using it in this rig, but this pedal has got a buffer on it. Now, the way that I normally use this is to run this after all my pedals. So it creates a buffer to go into my amp. Now, as I said, I'm not going to be using that today because I'm going to be using the stereo outs on the IR200. So that's going to go first in the chain. One of my favorite pedals to use on any pedal board is a compressor. On my main studio pedal board down here, I've got a Exotic FX SP compressor. Absolutely love that pedal. It's a little small format pedal built really, really well and sounds fantastic. Another compressor pedal that I love is this Keeley Plus compressor. The reason why I really like this pedal especially for for gigs is that it's really versatile to use with any guitar because it's got a tone control on it so you can shape the tone for your different guitars if you do get a string break or whatever or you, you know you need a guitar change halfway through the set it works really well and also it's got this switch on it which you can switch from single coil to humbuckers what this does to me is adjust the attack time of the compressor so if you've got a single coil it's less output or normally less output uh, you're going to get more of a snap with the single coils and you're not going to overwhelm it with the humbuckers it's just going to decrease that attack time so you can switch it down if you're using something like a Les Paul so I'm going to use that second now that's going to go up here next to the polytune because I'm not going to be changing any of the settings on that mid song if I need to you know adjust it for humbuckers or single coils I can do that and that's just by switching down here but I'm never going to be switching that on and off it's going to be permanently on I could control all of my drive sounds from the IR200 and the overdrive sounds in this are absolute killer. So I could do that, but I still want to take a separate drive pedal. Now the drive pedal that I think I'm going to be using for this is the JHS Boss Angry Driver. If you don't know what this pedal is, I've done a couple of videos on it, but it's a Boss Blues Driver and a JHS Angry Charlie. So it's two pedals in one. I'm going to have that somewhere on the board around here somewhere. And because it's two pedals in one, I can also use this little JHS red remote and that switches between the blues driver and the angry Charlie. So let's stick that down there. I've got to be a little bit careful about how many pedals I put on this board because we're using this uh, True Tone One Spot Pro CS6. So we've got six outputs, but I want to get a delay pedal on this board. I love using delays. Um, and the IR200 hasn't got delays. It's got an amazing reverb in it, but I like to use some delays. So I'm going to use the Boss DD200. This is such a great sounding delay pedal. It's really versatile 
and you can use it with a couple of presets. It's also got MIDI. So if I want to run MIDI out of the IR200, I can do that. And then I can change patches from the IR200 or actually from the DD200. And uh, the delays and the patches of the IR200 will change at the same time. So that's going to go there. So far, we've got one, two, three, four, five pedals that are going to need power. So I've still got space for one more. But something that doesn't need power is an expression pedal. Now, I'm going to use this uh, Boss EV30 for this. And I'm going to be plugging that into the IR200. But I can also, as I said earlier, run the DD200 as well. And I could change different parameters using the EV30. So that's a definite on this board. So let's stick that there. The EV30 doesn't require any power, so I've still got space for one more pedal. Now, I think I've got all of my sort of effects covered that I would use on a normal gig. I don't really use modulation, and when I do use modulation, I use it in delays. So the DD200 is sort of covering all of that sort of stuff. But I have got space for one more pedal, and I think what I'm going to use on that is a little mini Crybaby Wah. So I can stick that there. So that's the format of the pedal board. Now I need to get it wired up. So I've got the pedal board wired up. It's definitely not the prettiest pedal board that I've ever created. And the wires are a bit all over the place, but I've sort of gone through the pedals and everything's working, but I'll do that again. Um, and then after I've checked all that, then I'll wire everything down. But, but you guys don't need to see that. There's enough dull, boring videos on the internet with people sort of taping their, their cables down. What have we got? Well, the guitar's going in over here. The great thing about these, these little BCB Boss pedal boards is that they've got like an input and output jacks. So you can plug your guitar into this little interface here and then connect out and then go into all your pedals. It's great because if the pedals are sitting a bit lower, you don't have to sort of angle your jack in and try and get it into the pedals. It sort of works perfectly. You can use the output section too, but I'm not. I'm just going to go straight out of the IR200 because I want to use the balanced outs. So let's turn off all the effects. So this is just the sound of the IR200. <laughs> So I definitely need to do a bit of work there, but first of all, let's switch in the compressor and I'll show you what the difference is. Take it out. And bring in. So the compressor's doing exactly what it should be doing. It's fattening up the guitar signal, but as I said earlier on, uh, we've got this tone control so I can adjust the tone for each guitar that I want to plug in. The compressor is going into the wah-wah pedal. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, then the wah-wah pedal is going all the way over here to the angry driver. And then the angry driver is plugged straight into the IR200. And then the IR200 has an effects loop, which the delay is plugged into. To me, this is the best way of working as I can adjust the effects loop for the DD200. So my basic sound is this. Which is a little bit dull. Now what I could do, I could so adjust the EQ on the IR200. Let's turn up the uh, treble a bit. And actually that does sound all right, but what I might do, let's wind that back. And let's go into the, the menu settings. Now what we've got inside the IR200 is a couple of separate EQs and we can have these as parametric EQs if we want to. So if I go into my system and then click on global EQA, uh, let's change that back to parametric. Hopefully you can see the screen on here. And let's go to the last screen. And what I want to try and do here is to sort of brighten up the guitar signal. Now guitar tones tend to go from, or the majority of the, the guitar sort of frequency spectrum goes from about 200 Hertz to about sort of 4K. So what I'm gonna do is just to boost that top end. So let's take that up to 4K. 
Now I'm also going to adjust the Q frequency. That is how wide we want that frequency band. Let's bring it back to one and let's notch that up to about five. Okay, so the difference is if I take it back to zero. Now that really works for me because it's just sort of sweetening up the top end. So let's switch in the DD200. A couple of things that I really love about the DD200. It sounds absolutely brilliant. And you've got immediately on the top, you've got more presets than this, but immediately on the top, you've got five presets. You've got the manual preset, which is basically how uh, all the controls are set on the top. And then you've got these different presets that you can switch between by clicking this button here. Now also with this button, if I hold it down, I get my tap tempo function as well. So I can tap out the tempo of the song, which I think is really handy. So with the delay off, it sounds like this. And with it on. So it's a real subtle dark delay. Now, personally, this is sort of rhythm delay sound that I would use. And also when I switch in the overdrive pedal, uh, that will just push that delay a little bit further because we're driving into the front of the preamp side of this pedal a little bit harder. but I'll come to the drive pedal in a minute. So I've got my basic delay sound and the way that I've got this set up as I push the preset button, the delay increases. And then lastly, I've got my dotted eighth note delay. But let's go back to uh, preset number two. Next, we've got the anchor driver. The great thing about this pedal is it's two pedals in one, as I explained earlier, and I've got the, the little red remote plugged in. So what I can do is to switch between the blues driver, and then by pushing the button again, And then, as I said, I can switch between that and my blues driver. Bring back the EQ a bit. Okay, lastly, we've got the wah-wah pedal. Lastly, the reason why I set the expression pedal up is because I can then control the amount of gain that's been generated by the IR200. So this is a setting inside the IR200. You can set the expression pedal to do lots of different things like, you know, control the reverb, control the volume of the unit. But for me to control the gain really helps because um, I can sort of set the gain on the pedal for different songs. I'll show you what I mean. If I just play a chord. <laughs> It's like having an automated sort of gain control on your amplifier where you could just sort of set it exactly right for that particular song. So there it is. There's my silent stage pedal board all ready for the gig. Now, as I said, I think what I'm probably going to do is to neaten up these cables just so everything is good for the gig and you know won't come out halfway through the gig and I, you know, I can't sort of nudge anything and break any cables. So I need to do that. But there's the basic pedal board and that's what I'm going to be taking to the gig. Anyway, I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.